Well folks, welcome back to the shop and welcome back to this little series on the restoration or should I just say the uh, revival of a Nimrod Sportsman lighter. So uh, when we left off last time uh, I needed to get a few supplies to get this working again. Uh, one thing I wanted to do was put an o-ring on the um, the fuel seal and I found an appropriate o-ring. To be honest I could probably go a bit hot, larger uh, but I had these number seven o-rings in stock and they seem to fit so I'm gonna use that rather than go out and buy a new one. Uh, we need a wick and I did have some Zippo wicks in stock so we're gonna use the Zippo wick in there and that should work fine. I don't have any Zippo packing and I was going to get some and then I remembered that uh, my buddy uh, WKR Piper in Cincinnati told me about this wonderful product called uh, cotton bacon and I have not yet gotten any cotton bacon but I want to try that in a lighter. It supposedly is a much more absorbent cotton. It holds on to the fluid for a longer period of time and I just wanted to try it. So I'm not going to buy any new uh, packing for this. I'm just going to kind of pull out the, the old stuff and use it. Uh, and you know, I don't know if this is actually just cotton or, or what it is, but it doesn't matter. That's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and get the rest of the packing out of this. Which is not an easy task. Well, they, they certainly did pack it in there. Um, let's see, let's get a little plastic bag to put that in so I don't lose it or get it overly dirty here. Uh, it's already got some gunk on it. Uh, you know what, let's put all the little bits in there while we're cleaning up the lighter so we don't lose anything. Okay, so... There's there's a couple of things we want to clean on this, and, and really only two of them are essential, as far as I can tell. Let me just take a look down in there. Okay, that's, that's good. I'm just looking to, to try to see the... It's very difficult to get the light to shine in there. But just to, to try to see the... Um, the passageway that the wick has to go through and it looks it looks fairly clear and we'll, we'll give it a little bit of a clean out uh, the, the two important things one is the wheel and we do want to make sure that the wheel is, is clean and the other is this flint chamber and again I can't there's no way to get light to shine here so hopefully you can see the, the this probably brass tube ends right here and that extends all the way up through to here, which is where the, the screw goes on to hold the spring in place. Um, what happens a lot with lighters, not just uh, these, but Zippos, is that folks, you know, put them away and they forget about them and they've got the flint in there and the flint actually breaks down over time. It reacts to moisture in the air and you wind up getting a lot of gunk in that tube. That's bad for two reasons. One is it you know, might impede the passage of the, the spring and make it impossible for you to get the flint in there. The other is that it just over time is going to scrape off and it's going to wind up accumulating on the wheel. And that's going to make striking to be uh, a bit harder. So we're going to scrub out that tube. We're, we might as well, while we're scrubbing, scrub out the tube for the uh, wick. And we're going to scrub the wheel. So to do that, I'm going to go get some probably mineral spirits and a wire brush, and I'll be back shortly. Guys, I found my mineral spirits. I have very little left, but it should be more than enough for what we need to do. I've got a uh, somewhat clean glass jar that I'm going to pour some of that in. It doesn't matter that much. And let's just pop the top on this, which is always a challenge. Oh, wait a minute, I've got my... I just happen to have a large screwdriver here. <laughs> that is a complete accident, but hey, it'll work. We'll take it. And we'll pour some of that mineral spirits into that glass jar. Oh boy, that is really, really close to the end of the container. Oh, we got 
more than what we need though. I use mineral spirits. Um, it just seems to break down the buildup on these wheels better than anything else that I've tried. So that's the reason I'm using it. And for the, the internal clean out, we're just going to use some bristled pipe cleaners and see how that works. So we'll start with the flint tube because that's the thing that's most critical. Um, and I'm just going to pass one dry down the tube. And that seems to be hitting the, the wheel, so that's good. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit a little bit dirty in there, not too bad. Okay, um, I don't know if the large end is gonna fit. Oh, there we go. A little bit more scrubbing action there. Okay, now we'll just put a drop of mineral spirits on. Go to town. And you can see that's taking out a lot more. Now, is this absolutely essential? Uh, probably not. But you know, you're you're doing it anyway. You might as well do it right. Okay, I think that'll be fine. Uh, let's try to do the same for the... And this is a little bit more tricky because I gotta get all the way down in there to get through the, the passageway for the wick. Uh, that's actually very, very clear. Um, it's just a little tiny uh, orifice that holds the wick in place. Eh, we'll, we'll do a little dab of the mineral spirits in there just to... All right, so that's fine. Uh, this chamber here, it definitely has some carbonization in it. I don't know if it's really worthwhile uh, worrying about it too much. Let's just try one of these doubled over and see what we can get off in there, but I don't want to turn this into a major cleanup effort here. can see the, the carbon's definitely coming off. Um, if you don't have mineral spirits and you want to do something like this, probably any solvent would be fine. You could probably just use water. Um, again, the main reason I like the mineral spirits is, is more for the, um, the wheel than anything else. Yeah, that actually cleaned up pretty well. I'm gonna put, run a paper towel through that. Let's see if I can get any loose remaining bits and bobs out. Yeah, actually, that 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 worked out pretty well. I'm I'm glad we did that. Uh, it's a bit more shiny in there and, and clean. All right, so the last thing to worry about then is, is the wheel. Now, <laughs> with Zippos, what I actually do, do I have a Zippo handy? Yeah, so if, I, if I'm cleaning the Zippo, I actually take the insert out and just turn it upside down in a jar of mineral spirits and let that soak uh, before I scrub it. But for this, we, we obviously can't do that, and I don't think it's that important. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take a fluffy pipe cleaner and we're just going to dab it. And just kind of roll the wheel around and, and just kind of get it all saturated. That, that looks pretty good already. Uh, okay, so now I've got a soft wire brush. This is actually a brass brush. And I'm just gonna 
go to town on this uh, scrubbing like this and the wheel will spin naturally as I do that. I want to do this off camera just because it, I don't want to make a mess right here so I'm going to go over to the side here and do this and I'll show you the results when I'm done. Alright so we got uh, some of that gunk off onto my fingers and onto the, onto the lighter itself but uh, yeah the wheel looks better you know it's it, it's hard to, to actually see it but those ridges are now clear and I think doing that is worthwhile I mean I've, I've found Zippos get to a point where they just simply won't strike anymore and if you do this or the, you know you have to strike them three or four times to get them to light and if you do what I just did uh, you the light at the first strike every time uh, let's see how crazy do we want to get with this um, maybe a little bit more right in right right in around there That's going to be good. You know, you could you could go crazy with this. I could take it over to the buffing wheel and buff it up. Um, there's obviously some grime caught in these ridges, but I kind of like it. I, I I like the patina on it. I don't want to I don't want to mess with it too much. I just want it to be functional. So we're going to leave it at that. And I've made a bit of a mess here, but not too bad. All right. So now that we have the lighter clean, the next thing we have to do or the last thing we have to do is get the darn thing reassembled and the first problem that we need to address is this uh, screw for the flint chamber and its lack of a spring so I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do here but I've got an idea and we'll see how this goes uh, this is an old Bic lighter it is completely out of fluid it does oh <laughs> I say it's completely out of fluid then the darn thing lights um, it's closed to completely out of fluid. I can't hear anything. Anyway, uh, it's close enough to being completely out of fluid. We're not going to do anything that's going to break the, uh, the integrity of the fluid chamber here. Uh, we're going to take this apart, and there's a spring in here, and there's a flint in here, and we're going to see if we can get those out. So let's just see. We want to do minimal damage because I don't want to crack the plastic I don't want to uh, wow it's actually no place to get that in there they must have known I was coming <laughs> hmm let's just try to there we go so that is now off and yeah, the flint on these is actually held underneath directly underneath the wheel so we got let's take the safety thing back the wheel is just pinned in there, so we should be able to pry that off with a screwdriver. Let's see if we can. Okay, and I'm trying to be careful not to have that spring across the room on me. I don't know how much tension the spring is under. Okay, I'm on wheel. Oh, there's the. Oh. Well, the flint took off. <laughs> And the wheel just followed it. But we got the spring. <laughs> the spring is what I was after. And uh, that is fantastic. It's a shame I lost the flint because the flint on these is actually a pretty good long-lasting flint. Uh, save your your expired Bix and take the flints out. It's, it's really worthwhile. But we got this spring. Um, and this might work. The one end is closed. It's It's got a little bit of something in there that... Uh, is good because we want something to push against the flint. Uh, will it? Uh, it looks like that's going to work. I'm going to need a little persuading, but I'm I'm probably going to be able to get this to snap over the the, uh, the little thing here. Yeah, I might, I might have to do a little persuading with that, but I will get that in. And is it long enough? It's probably too long. We're probably going to have to cut that. But that's okay. We can figure that out. Uh, in terms of flints, I've got 
some of these clipper flints that I like a bit more than the Zippo flints. They seem to last a bit longer. So I'm going to use one of those. And let's see, we'll, let's go ahead and drop a flint down in the flint chamber and then see where this spring sits and see where we have to cut it. Okay, so we'll just put the flint in there. And this is the end that's got the little bit of whatever that is in there. And let's see. Yeah, that seems like it's going to work. I'd rather have this too tense than not tense enough. So let's uh, let's see. Where's my heavy scissors? So I'm going to cut that. I, I know I'm probably leaving too much here. I'm going to cut it right about there. Uh oh. Okay, so will that now fit? It will, but it's not going to stay. So I'm going to I'm going to need to do a little uh, compressing of this to get it to stick. But I'm not going to do that yet because I just want to see if the the tension here is enough. So let's just pretend that that's stuck together. Is that going to let me get the threads down? Uh, that little piece sticking up is going to be a problem. All right, we'll try to coax that in. You know, a better pair of wire clippers would have probably been a good idea. I shall get some wire clippers and be right back. All right, got a got a nice pair of wire clippers and. Just clip that. There, so now that's nice and in line. Flint's still in there. Let's see if we can get this to screw in now. It might be a little bit too... too much. Oh, that's not good. Might be a bit too much spring tension on it. There we go. These were apparently designed with a dime in mind, so <laughs> that's the the tool that's shown in the literature, you know, like the ad literature, being used for both that and for the fuel cover. Well that Ah, it's a little bit too much pressure. So let's take that out. And what we're going to do is we're just going to remove maybe, I hate to use metric, but a millimeter at a time. Um, it's funny, a millimeter just seems a bit more correct to me in this case, but yeah, gives you a finer gradation. Yeah, we'll, we'll maybe. So we're actually what we're going to do is we're going to take it down one turn at a time until we get it to fit properly, and I'll bring you back once we've got it fitting properly. All right. Well, that actually took a bit more work than I would have guessed, but I got the spring cut to size. Um, it is approximately seven. Oh, seven eighths of an inch I'll show you here that's measured from where the spring ends on the uh, the little screw out to the end it's about seven eighths of an inch so if you want to try this yourself and you've got one of these um, big lighter springs you can cut it down to seven eighths and save yourself some time uh, if you do cut this uh, use use good wire cutters and wear safety glasses those little spring things just flew everywhere I have no idea where any of them are and uh, I could easily imagine one getting stuck in someone's eye. But this now uh, appears to be working and it was actually surprisingly difficult to get this to spark and I'm not exactly sure why. 
I wound up switching from the clipper to an original Zippo flint. Uh, they're a bit softer, and that's good and bad. Uh, I'm not sure why the clipper flint wouldn't have worked, though. But if we screw this in now... Come on. <laughs> it was working. It seems to take a while for this to kind of burn in, so it's supposed to spark with the the wheel going in that direction towards the chamber. And it just doesn't want to turn that way. Okay, so I think the problem is that that flint is actually uh, kind of broken in at a very acute angle. And if you then, once the flint's broken in, remove it and then try to replace it again, you got to get that angle just right or it's going to give you trouble. So, you know, we don't often need to take the flint out and put it back in. I did it to show you the spring, and that's why I had trouble with it. But now, hopefully you can see that that is sparking quite nicely. So, next we move our attention to the uh, fuel chamber, and most importantly, getting a wick in there. And I'm going to try to use a uh, original Zippo wick, because it's what I got. Um, I've never actually needed to change a Zippo wick. It's funny, I've got Zippos that are 30 years old and the wicks have been just fine. They, they don't uh, really burn out. But let's see, this is, this is a new Zippo wick. There she is. Very nice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the wick and just try to insert it straight down through the little orifice there at the bottom. And you can see now it's it's poking out, hopefully, well not with that there, you won't be able to. Hopefully you can see it's poking out just a little bit. It's kind of resisting being pushed, and of course this is flexing on me. So I'm gonna get a pair of tweezers and see if I can pull that in a bit more. There we go. And I've pulled that out now, so it, it's probably a lot further exposed than it needs to be, but I'd rather have it like that and we can adjust it as we go along with the packing. So for the packing, I'm going to use the original cotton that was in there. Uh, I'm not sure if this is actually the original packing or if this is some cotton balls or something that someone used, but that's okay. We're just going to stretch it out. And like I said, I'm going to get some of this cotton bacon that I've heard about uh, and, and try that as packing. And this would be a good lighter to try that on but for now this will this will be fine okay so that's kind of fluffed out and stretched and we're just going to start taking pieces of this and what i'm going to try to do is pack it around the wick and that's something that i've i've learned over the years whether it's a zippo or any other sort of lighter that uses one of these wicks you you do want to have the the wick well kind of surrounded by the packing and um, even woven in and out of it because that's how the fluid gets to the wick and very often you'll find that you know you, you run out of fluid quickly not because there's not fluid in the chamber but because it can't get to the wick I just want to make sure that that is still exposed and I'm gonna pull that to about the halfway point and hopefully that'll be good. And now I'm going to put a little bend in this because I want to go ahead and shove about, well, almost all of it in before we put some more packing in. And make sure we get that on either side. And as I'm doing that, the last little bit folded over, that's okay. That's just fine. And I don't know if I really need more than that. I'm going to put one more little piece in on the top just to... And boy, you could probably write a whole doctoral dissertation on whether more or less is better for this. Um, that's what I had left over from the original, so, but I fluffed it out a lot, so there's probably more air space in there now, which may or may not be good. All right, last thing I'm going to do before we put fluid in is I'm just going to put this O-ring and 
again hopefully you can see there's a, there's a little ridge there that I believe was intended for an o-ring as I understand it some models had them some didn't um, but this model now has one uh, this is a number seven o-ring probably kind of could have gone up a size and it would have been fine but this works it fits everything's good so there we go so it's getting exciting now all right so all that remains for us to do now is to uh, fill the fuel chamber with some Zippo fluid and we'll get this opened up and hopefully the lighter will work so we'll just apply a generous squirt of fluid and place the cap on now I could finger tighten this all the way down to the point where it was flush before I put the o-ring in and I can't do that now I can't close but I can't do that with the o-ring however if I take a dime which again is sort of shown in the ad literature is what you are supposed to use here and it fits perfectly um, I can crank that down completely and and now it's got a nice seal um, all right shall we try it Ha ha! <laughs> we have flame. <laughs> Took a couple of strikes for it to work out, but there you go. That is pretty cool. Uh, let's see if we can do it again. There we go. So the trick is the, the, the wheel has to be turned in this direction. So it has to be turned, if, if you were to strike it with the thing open, it has to be turned towards the uh, ignition chamber and therefore to get it to light if you just want to do it as you're opening it you have to hold your thumb over it and let the thumb drag on the wheel as you pull it, it takes a little bit of a little bit of skill to get that right well we're not here for style points but uh there you go that's that's pretty cool so we've brought back the uh the nimrod sportsman so the Nimrod Sportsman and the Commander, both very nice lighters. I got to spend some time with this guy to see uh, how much I like it, if I like it. This one, I really love. I, I highly recommend these uh, Nimrod Commanders. They light very easily. They're they're just they're just solid feeling. You know, just the way the the thing closes, the fact that they've got that seal around around the outside here. Um, I, I like them a lot. Uh, Zippos, don't get me wrong, I, I love Zippos and I'm probably not going to uh, switch over or anything like that. I'm, I'm always going to have Zippos available, but these are nice, nice alternatives for pipe lighters. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, please, I'd really appreciate your thumbs up. Of course, your comments are always appreciated. Uh, and if you're not subscribed and you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button and get notified the next time I post a video. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So with that, I'm going to bring this series to a close. Thank you for watching, and you all take care, and we'll talk again very soon.